Unit 9, taking an order. Unit 9, taking an order. Ok, agora sim, boa tarde a quem estiver assistindo. E bom dia, boa noite a quem vai ver esse vídeo gravado. E eu estou acompanhando aqui justamente para ver se as legendas estão aparecendo, só um momento. As legendas vão aparecer somente após o processamento do vídeo. Então, é, boa tarde. Essa é a aula da lição 9 do curso de inglês 3 para turismo. A alternativa que nós decidimos coletivamente... É, que seria, né, que seria o que ia acontecer por conta da minha cirurgia, eu vou retomar a lição 9 desde o seu início e vou levá-la até o fim nesse vídeo. Vou condensar, obviamente não vai ter todas aquelas repetições de áudio, uma vez que vocês mesmos podem voltar o vídeo quantas vezes quiserem para ter acesso ao áudio é, novamente e tentar praticar a habilidade de vocês de listening. O idioma de legenda desse vídeo está definido como inglês, porque predominantemente é o que vai ser falado aqui. Então, eu peço a vocês a compreensão. Né? E quem vai assistir offline vai ativar as legendas e vai obter as legendas automáticas em inglês e suponho eu que o YouTube possa traduzi-las para o português, o que eu sinceramente não recomendo é, com exceção do Etelvino, né, que é um aluno não ouvinte, mas eu não recomendo para os demais, porque o propósito é justamente praticar a oralidade do inglês. É, bom, eu estou usando o meu canal, que é um canal que eu uso em geral para fazer a divulgação do meu livro, é, por isso esses overlays aí em cima e aqui embaixo, né, para contribuição com Pix, aqui nesse cantinho. Eu ainda não me acostumei com a câmera nesse cantinho aqui, para quem, principalmente para quem não é aluno do curso, né, obviamente, e de alguma maneira quer agradecer o conteúdo produzido. E aqui em cima, né, o QR Code e o link para comprar meu livro sobre as jornadas de junho, né, que é o livro que eu produzi na área de análise do discurso. Mas eu vou deixar os overlays aqui nesses vídeos como uma forma de divulgar o meu livro, mas o propósito central aqui é trabalhar com inglês 3 para turismo. Eu já estou com todos os documentos abertos aqui, os áudios prontos, e nós vamos começar, ok? So let's go to lesson 9. Ok, lesson 9 is about taking an order, taking a food order. So it's all about food, ok? We are going to talk about different types of food. So, the purpose, of, the purposes of this lesson are first how to look after guests as they arrive. So when a guest arrives, you have to look after them. It's like take care of them, and pay attention to what's necessary to their needs. Okay, with sentences like, for example, "Can I take your coat?" Or how to show the guest the way to his table or her table. This way, please. Okay? So, this is one of, these are one of the purposes, or two of the purposes, in fact, of this lesson. Also, you are going to learn how to welcome guests, to make them feel welcome. Okay? So, how to present a menu, how to offer an aperitif with sentences, Sentences like, here is the menu, or can I get you an aperitif? And finally, the last purpose, how to take orders, how to take note of orders and make them 
arrive to the guest or to the customer in a restaurant. Okay. So questions like, are you ready to order are very important before you collect the guest's order. Well, these are the purposes. And we have a starter. The starter asks us to read the menu. So we have a menu over here. Okay, we have this menu and we have to read this menu and tell which dishes are vegetarian. So let's explore the menu. Okay. Vegetarian is a cognate word to Portuguese. So for you, I think it's no problem. So basically, dishes based on vegetables. So we have here in the menu the list of first courses, which are the first thing you eat before the main course, okay? So, in Portuguese, the famous prato de entrada e prato principal, right? So, in the first courses, we have avocado and brown tart, okay? Avocado, which is a fruit, okay? And brown tart, browns are a kind of seafood. Okay, so let me sh show you here the avocados and the brown tart. Just a moment. So let's go to Google Images. And if you type avocado, this is what you have is to make guacamole, for instance. This is an avocado. Okay, now what is a brown? Browns, okay, also known as shrimp. Now, brown tart is a food like this. These over here, over here, what you have is brown tart, okay? More examples of brown tart. Brown tarts over here, okay? So, is this vegetarian? Well, it goes browns. We can find browns in this dish. So it's not vegetarian. This is not vegetarian. Now, the next one, mushrooms in garlic. Let's talk about mushrooms in garlic. Let's see what mushrooms are. And if you look here, when you search for mushroom, Champignon, for example, is a type of mushroom. We have a diversity of mushrooms, okay? Many types of mushroom. They're probably talking about champignon. So mushrooms, okay? And what's the other word? <clears throat> These mushrooms are in garlic. Like we have pasta in garlic. Now let's see what garlic is. And if you search for garlic, garlic, okay, garlic, so mushrooms, vegetarian, yes, okay, garlic too, so mushrooms in garlic, we can consider a vegetarian dish, so let's use Green here and ticket. Mushrooms in garlic. Okay. Now, the next one. Oh, sorry about this.
Next one is asparagus with hollandaise sauce. Give me just a moment to find again those editing tools. No way. Not this. I need that pencil. Oh gosh. Just a moment. Please do. Please do. Comment, please. Yes. So we were talking about avocado and brown tart, not vegetarian. Right? Now, the next one. Is mushrooms in garlic. Again, I'm sorry about that. Avocado and brown tart. All right. Now, next one, mushrooms and garlic. Yeah. Yes, vegetarian. Now, asparagus with hollandaise sauce. Let's investigate what asparagus are. And if we go to the images, We can see these so these are vegetables so it's okay for a vegetarian dish now let's see hollandaise as you know it's a nationality sauce this is hollandaise sauce okay so let's see what goes on hollandaise sauce to know if it's vegetarian or not. So let's see Hollandaise sauce recipe. Let's check of what it's made, the ingredients. And if you go here, you will see that to make a Hollandaise sauce, Hollandaise sauce is a classic creamy sauce that's perfect for breakfast or brunch. This recipe is easy and no, no fail. It takes just five minutes in a blender. Drizzle on the top of poached eggs, so it goes eggs. Uh, eggs Benedict, vegetables, or several other recipes for a delicious finishing touch. So it goes eggs on it. We have to make a judgment. Let's consider vegetarian, those vegetarians that eat eggs, okay? So in this case, yes, it's a vegetarian dish. If you are one of those vegetarians that eat eggs, then you can have Hollandaise sauce. There are some vegetarians that don't take eggs as a food. So in this case, no. But we are considering, okay, we are considering vegetarians that eat eggs so yes i don't know why but this thing went back to red i want it to green so that's okay now chicken liver well chicken 
is this. And chicken. So, we will not consider it vegetarian, of course. But let's check what's chicken liver. These are chicken livers. Chicken liver. Okay. We have the human liver. This is a human liver. Okay. So, chicken liver, pate, is a pate made with chicken liver, made of chicken liver. Like this one, or something like this. This is chicken liver pate. So, of course, if chickens goes on it, it is not vegetarian. Not vegetarian. Now, the next one is goat cheese salad. Let's take a look at this salad. What goes on it? We know that there is some kind of cheese. Now, what kind of cheese? A cheese made, some cheese made of goat, goat milk, goats. So, what is a goat? This is a goat. Okay. Very beautiful goat. Another goat. Okay, so goat cheese salad. Well, if you consider that these vegetarians eat milk derivatives, then it would be okay to consider goat cheese salad as vegetarian. Considering vegetarians that eat eggs, those that eat eggs and also uh, milk. Okay, so goat cheese salad is goat cheese salad is okay to be considered as vegetarian. And finally, smoked trout. Well, smoked is a process to conserve food, okay, by using smoke. We have smoked pepperoni, we have smoked cheese, and we have smoked trout. Now, what is a trout? Trout is a kind of fish, okay. This is a trout, another trout. Another one. So it's a fish that is conserved by means of smoking it, like smoked pepperoni. This pepperoni is smoked. Okay, so you use smoke to make its process of conservation. Okay. Now, can we consider smoked trout as a vegetarian dish? Of course not. So, we are now saying, no, it is not vegetarian. And with this, we finish the first course list. Okay, so the first course, the vegetarian dishes are the mushrooms in garlic, asparagus with hollandaise sauce, and the goat's cheese salad. Now, let's go to the main courses. And let's see which of these are vegetarian or not vegetarian. So, different types of steak. Anything but vegetarian. Not vegetarian, right? Now, fillet steak. Just like in Portuguese. This thing here, okay? We have a fillet, okay? So this is a fillet steak. Vegetarian? Of course not. Of course not. Fillet steak is not vegetarian. Next one. 
pork chops with lemon and celery. Well, you can search for this word lemon, it's just like in Portuguese. And celery is a herb, okay? I will show you celery in Google Images. This is celery, okay? It's a kind of plant, okay? So, for the celery, okay. For the celery, okay to say it's vegetarian, but the problem is here, pork chops. Pork, no, what is pork? It's like in Portuguese, yeah? So let's go to pork. And let's search for it. And what do you find? When you look for pork chops, these are pork chops. Okay? It's pig meat. Yeah? So, when you search for pork, an isolated word, you have this. These are pork cuts, the different cuts of the pork. Okay, so when you refer to the animal, you talk about a pig. But normally, when you talk when you talk about food, you're talking about pork. Okay, so this is pork meat, right? So, not vegetarian, of course, not because of the lemon, which is a vegetable. Well, not a vegetable; it's a fruit, and the celery, but because of the porks. Pork chops with lemon and celery. Not vegetarian. The next one, lamb cutlets in red wine. Okay, red wine, that's perfect. Yeah, wine comes from the grape. And the grape is of vegetable origin. But lamb cutlets. Let's see what a lamb is. search for lamb and we have this beautiful animal which looks like but is not a goat okay it's similar to a goat but it's not so we have the goat and we have the lamb now what are lamb cutlets these are lamb cutlets so, of course, we can conclude that this dish is not vegetarian. So, let's cross it over. I've got let's say red wine. Not vegetarian. The next one is salmon with dill sauce. So, again, we have a sauce, as we have shoyu sauce, hollandaise sauce, uh, parmesan sauce. We have this. Dill sauce. Now, what is dill? This is dill. Okay. It's a kind of plant. It's a herb. Yeah. Now, dill sauce. It's a sauce made with dill. This is dill sauce. Right? There's dill sauce over this. Yeah. So, for the dill sauce, it's okay, or it seems to be okay. But how about salmon? Well, this is just like in Portuguese, is that it's a type of fish. Salmon. Show you. <laughs> Sorry. Let me show you the salmon. This is a salmon, some cuts of salmon, okay, different images of a salmon. So if you are a vegetarian, you won't take salmon as a food. So salmon with two sauce is not vegetarian. The next one is grilled aubergine with parmesan. Well, we know that parmesan is a type of cheese. 
this is okay considering those vegetarian that eat milk derivatives now something here is grilled we have grilled chicken that's chicken that goes on the, the grill we have grilled fillet we have grilled steak okay a steak that goes on the grill but let's check what aubergines are if you go to the images and search for aubergines you will find this aubergines okay these are aubergines so grilled aubergines Or something like this. These aubergines are grilled. They went over a grill. Let's see a grill. This is a grill. Another grill. So grilled aubergines are aubergines that go over a grill. Like this one. Or maybe these ones. Or these ones, okay? Well, we can conclude that grilled aubergines with parmesan are no problem for those who are vegetarian. So, let's check it. Okay, grilled aubergines with parmesan are a vegetarian dish. That's perfect, okay? Now, the next one. King prawns with chili and garlic. We have talked about the garlic. Garlic is okay. Chili. Let's see what chili is. Chili. It is a kind of pepper. Also a kind of dish made with chili peppers okay chili peppers this is mexican chili okay now when we talk about chili here we are talking about the pepper itself okay now that the food is king prawns with chili and garlic we know what chili is we know what garlic is let's remember garlic Chili, this one, and garlic. The part of the chili and garlic is okay for a vegetarian, but the problem is the prawns. An animal, it's seafood. Prawns are seafood. Now, what do they mean by king prawns? A king prawn is a very big prawn, okay? King prawns. Okay? So king prawns are those big ones, okay? And they go with chili and garlic. Well, the part of the king prawns is really not acceptable for someone that is a vegetarian so we are going to cross it over to cross it out no way if you're a vegetarian you'll never eat king prawns with chili and garlic and finally red pepper and mushroom tart we know mushroom we have seen mushroom when we discussed the very first one mushrooms in garlic okay so mushrooms just to refresh your memories this thing here like champignon is a kind of mushroom it's okay mushroom tart is something like this Mushroom tart over here. 
Another example for mushroom tart. Another example for mushroom tart. Seems to be okay for a vegetarian. This part of the mushroom tart is okay. Now, how about the red pepper? Well, we have the chili pepper that goes with the grilled over. Uh, sorry, that goes with the king crowns with chili and garlic. And we have the red pepper. Let's see what a red pepper is. <coughs> Some red peppers. A red pepper. Another red pepper. One more red pepper. Red peppers. Now, if you change colors, we have green peppers. And look, it's the same thing, but green. And we also have the yellow pepper. So, green pepper over here yellow pepper and red pepper okay so let's now see the dish red pepper vegetarian yeah okay mushroom tart vegetarian okay too so this seems to be okay for a vegetarian dish so now we have a list of all the vegetarian dishes in this menu, which we can answer now. They start to read the menu. Which dishes are vegetarian? Well, in the first courses, mushrooms and garlic, asparagus with hollandaise sauce, and goat cheese salad are vegetarian. In the main courses, the grilled aubergines with parmesan and the red pepper and mushroom tart are vegetarian. Okay? I strongly recommend you to read the items and repeat with me. So, go back in this video in Portuguese. Voltem esse vídeo quantas vezes for necessário e repitam comigo ao ler o nome desses pratos. Vou usar uma nova cor aqui. E vou sublinhar los à medida que eu for falando. Avocado and brown tart. Repeat. Mushrooms and garlic. Repeat. Pause the video and go back in the video if necessary. Mushrooms and garlic. As Pargos with Hollandaise sauce. Repeat. Chicken liver pate. Goat's cheese salad. Smoke. Oak trout. Pay attention to the pronunciation of these. Smoked, not smoked. Okay? A pronúncia. Nós, brasileiros, tentamos reforçar muito esse E do ED final. Não. Smoked, smoked, smoked trout. Não precisa falar rápido, precisa linkar bem as palavras. <coughs> E fazer uma pronúncia onde a vogal apareça menos. Smoked. Smoked trout. Let's go to the main course. Fillet steak. Repeat. Pork chops with lemon and celery. Repeat. Lamb cutlets and red wine. Repeat. Salmon with dill sauce. Mm -hmm. 
Royal Dover jeans with parmesan. Pink browns with chili and garlic. Red pepper and mushroom tart. Okay, so we have finished all the menu, and we know that the vegetarian dishes are number one, mushrooms and garlic, number two, asparagus with Hollandaise sauce, number three, goat's cheese salad, number four, in the main courses, grilled aubergines with parmesan, and finally, red pepper and mushroom tart. So the starter is okay. Now we have a listening. In the listening exercises, I normally play the audio two times for you, the second one with some pauses. In this video, I'll play the audio two times, but in the second time, I'll be answering the exercise. So the first time you listen and pause the video in Portuguese, okay? A primeira vez que eu tocar o áudio, ouçam quantas vezes for necessário e depois pausem o vídeo. Façam o exercício. Porque a segunda vez que eu tocar o áudio, eu já vou fazer a correção simultaneamente ao que é falado. Sem as pausas. Então, ouçam quantas vezes for necessário e na, no momento tem que se sentirem confiantes, tentem responder aos exercícios. Exercícios. A segunda vez que eu tocar o áudio será para fazer a correção do exercício, tanto do 1 um quanto do 2. Vamos lá. Exercício 1. Um. Exercise number 1. Listen to the dialogue. Are the statements true or false? Famoso verdadeiro ou falso, né? True or false. Nós vamos ouvir um diálogo. E vamos ter que dizer se as afirmações são verdadeiras ou falsas. Number one. The guests order aperitifs. Vocês vão procurar ficar atentos a saber se eles pedem ou não. O aperitif. True. False. I don't know. Number two. The soup of the day is minestrone. There is a soup of the day, and you have to know if it's minestrone or not. Number three, they don't order a first course. They don't order a first course. Is it true? Or false? Number four, the woman orders fish for her main course. The woman orders fish for her main course. So, fish. What's the fish that you know? Salmon, trout, tuna, okay? So, beware of the word fish and the synonyms for the word fish. Number five. They order a bottle of white, <coughs> sorry, of white wine. So let's see if it's really a bottle, if it's really white or red wine, <coughs> and tell if it's true or false. <coughs> Sorry about that. And number six, they order a bottle of sparkling mineral water. Remember, sparkling, champagne. Champagne is sparkling wine. Sparkling water is water that's not still. We have the oppositions. The, the normal water that you get out from any place in your home, like from the fridge, is normally called still water. 
Now there is some gas in it, just as a soft drink, like a Coke or a Sprite. So you call it sparkling mineral water. So you have to check if they order water, and if it if they order water, if it's sparkling or not. Okay, and tell me if it's true or false. So it's time to listen to the audio and check if uh, uh, you can answer it. Just a moment. Unit 9. Taking an order. Good evening, sir. A table for two? Yes, please. The name's Mark. I'll show you to your table. This way. Can I take your coats? Thank, Thank you. you. Here's the menu and wine list. Can I get you an aperitif? Yes, please. A gin and tonic. Um, the same for me. Thank you. Here you are. Two gin and tonics. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I think so. What's the soup of the day? It's tomato and basil. Hmm. I think I have the avocado and prawn tart to start with, followed by the salmon. And the goat cheese salad for me, please, followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Medium rare, please. And would you like to order some wine? Yes. What about the Cabernet Sauvignon, Anna? I think I'd prefer white. Why don't you have half a bottle of the Cabernet and I'll have a glass of Chablis? And can we have a bottle of mineral water, please? Still or sparkling? Still, please. Unit 9. Taking an order. Good evening, sir. A table for two? Yes, please. The name's Mark. I'll show you to your table. This way. Can I take your coats? Thank, Thank you. you. Here's the menu and wine list. Can I get you an aperitif? Yes, please. A gin and tonic. Um, the same for me. Thank you. Here you are. Two gin and tonics. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I think so. What's the soup of the day? It's tomato and basil. Hmm. I think I have the avocado and prawn tart to start with. followed by the salmon. And the goat cheese salad for me, please, followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Medium rare, please. And would you like to order some wine? Yes. What about the Cabernet Sauvignon, Anna? Me, please. Followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Please, a gin and tonic. Um, the same for me. Thank you. Here you are, two gin and tonics. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I think so. What's the soup of the day? It's tomato and basil. Hmm. I think I have the avocado and prawn tart to start with, followed by the salmon.
And the goat cheese salad for me, please, followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Medium rare, please. And would you like to order some wine? Yes. What about the Cabernet Sauvignon, Anna? I think I'd prefer white. Why don't you have half a bottle of the Cabernet? And I'll have a glass of Chablis. And can we have a bottle of mineral water, please? Still or sparkling? Still, please. <coughs> okay, let's discuss the results. The guests order aperitifs. If you go back to the audio, you see that, yes, they order aperitifs. She orders a gin and tonic, so it's true. The soup of the day is minestrone. No, not really. In fact, the soup of the day is tomato, tomato and basil, okay? Which is, basil is manjericum, so it's false, okay? Tomato and basil soup is not minestrone soup. The problem is the name of the soup of the day. Number three, they don't order a first course. This is false because they order avocado and brown tart. And avocado and brown tart, sorry, is a first course. Number four. The woman orders fish for her main course. It's true. She doesn't say fish, but she wants avocado and brown tart to start with, because it's a starter, and then followed by the salmon. She says, followed by the salmon. And salmon and fish. Salmon is fish, right? So it's true. Number five. This is a bit confusing. They order. Just a moment. They order a bottle of white wine. No, not really. The woman wants white wine. The man wants a Cabernet Sauvignon. And Cabernet Sauvignon is red wine. But she says, I think I prefer white. If you didn't listen to it, go back to the audio. She says, I think I prefer white. And she makes a suggestion. Why don't you have half a bottle of the Cabernet? Not a, a full bottle, but half a bottle of the Cabernet. And I'll, I'll have a glass of Chablis. As you know, Chablis is a type of white wine. So this number five sentence here is false because he says they order a bottle, a complete bottle of white wine. No way. It's not white. It's Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's red wine. And it's not a bottle. It's half a bottle. So it's false. And finally, they order a bottle of sparkling mineral water. If you go back to the audio, you will see that it's not sparkling. It is still. Still mineral water. So it's false. Okay, I hope you understood the correction. I didn't correct, I didn't speak during the audio because there might be interference from my microphone into the audio. So, again, if you have questions, go back to the audio, listen to it as many times 
as you think it's necessary. And then let's go to exercise number two. And in exercise number two, we have to take notes. It's like as if you were a waiter or a waitress taking notes of the guest's order. So listen again. Go, okay, to the listening again. And complete the serve first order pad. This is the order pad. I think it's a kind of old-fashioned device, similar to a smartphone. Nowadays, they think it's done with a smartphone or a tablet. With the customer's food order. So you only have to take note of the food order, not the drink orders. Okay? So let's use the text box for this. Okay? So I'll play the audio again, and let's see what he asks for food. Unit 9. Taking an order. Good evening, sir. A table for two? Yes, please. The name's Marke. I'll show you to your table. This way. Can I take your coats? Thank, Thank you. you. Here's the menu and wine list. Can I get you an aperitif? Yes, please. A gin and tonic. And the same for me. Thank you. Here you are, two gin and tonics. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I think so. What's the soup of the day? It's tomato and basil. Hmm. I think I have the avocado and prawn tart to start with, followed by the salmon. And the goat cheese salad for me, please, followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Medium rare, please. And would you like to order some wine? Yes. What about the Cabernet Sauvignon, Anna? I think I'd prefer white. Why don't you have half a bottle of the Cabernet and I'll have a glass of Chablis? And can we have a bottle of mineral water, please? Still or sparkling? Still, please. Okay, so let's discuss what's happening here the exercise tells you to take note of the food order not not the drinks i took note of some extra element here okay so i beg your pardon okay the fillet steak medium rare is already here over here fillet steak and R, medium rare. Okay. Fillet steak, medium rare. It's here. Before that, they order the salmon and the goat's cheese salad. Listen to the audio one more time. 
and check it in the order the sentences appear. Okay. Unit 9. Taking an order. Good evening, sir. A table for two? Yes, please. The name's Marco. I'll show you to your table. This way. Can I take your coats? Thank, Thank you. you. Here's the menu and wine list. Can I get you an aperitif? Yes, please. A gin and tonic. Um, the same for me. Thank you. Here you are. Two gin and tonics. Are you ready to order now? Yes, I think so. What's the soup of the day? It's tomato and basil. Hmm. I think I have the avocado and prawn tart to start with, followed by the salmon. And the goat's cheese salad for me, please, followed by the fillet steak. How would you like your steak? Medium rare, please. And would you like to order some wine? Yes. What about the Cabernet Sauvignon, Anna? I think I'd prefer white. Why don't you have half a bottle of the Cabernet and I'll have a glass of Chablis? And can we have a bottle of mineral water, please? Still or sparkling? Still, please. All right. So, we have just seen exercise number two. So, they order avocado and brown tart, salmon, goat's cheese salad, and a fillet steak medium rare teacher what's this medium rare let's go to google and check the differences in the points of uh, bacon or of roasting the steak steaks so as you know we have a steak now you have cooking We have a kind of gradation. The time that the steak uh, is left roasting or, or grilling will determine if it's blue rare, like this, almost raw, or rare. Do you see the difference? It's the cooking point. Okay, now medium rare, like this one, or medium, or next one, medium well done, or simply medium well, and finally 100% brown, well done. Okay. So you have this gradation. The man wants medium rare. So he wants the steak like this, okay? See how different it is from a well-done steak. Compare this one on the left with this one on the right, okay? So he wants it medium rare. Okay, this is, these are the two listening exercises that we have. Okay, so going now to the language study section. In the language study section, we have some sentences which are common for servers. I'll show you to your table. Repeat with me. I'll show you to your table. What does it mean? <coughs> Cliente chega no restaurante, você o conduz até a sua mesa. I'll show you to your table is what you tell the client, the guest, when he or she or they arrive at the restaurant. And you take them to the table. Can I take your coats? Okay. It's another offer that you make, okay, to take the coats and keep them safe in a place. Now, what's the coat? 
Don't make confusion with goat. I'll show you. This. This is a coat. Yeah? Another coat. Another coat. So when a waiter says, can I take your coats? He is offering to get the guest's coats and take to a place in the restaurant. So repeat with me. Can I take your coats? Next, here's the menu and wine list. In a restaurant, we have the menu with the food and drink, okay? And some restaurants have a wine list, a list with all the wines they have available. When do you use here's? Here's. É usado para demonstrar alguma coisa que está em suas mãos ou muito próximo de você. Se estivesse distante, seria theirs. Mas essa é uma outra questão. Here's the smartphone. Here are the headphones. Por que are? Não here's. Porque headphones está no plural. Now, it's in the plural. Here are the headphones. Because it's one headphone, another headphone. Earphone, in fact. Okay. Here's my cup. Portanto, você usa isso em situações de demonstração. Now, repeat with me. Here's the menu and wine list. Next. Can we get you an aperitif? Aperitif is a kind of drink before that you have before the first course or with the first course. It's a drink. Okay? Like a gin and tonic in the example in the audio. When the waiter says, when the server says, can I get you an aperitif? It is an offer. He's making an offer. So he is offering an aperitif. And we use the can I get at you? To offer things. Example. Vocês chegam na minha casa. Eu vou oferecer para vocês um agrado. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Can I get you a cup of tea? Can I get you some cookies? Can I get you a piece of cake? Can I get you some brown tart? Do you understand? Can I get you? É usado para fazer ofertas. Aparentemente, a gente, a gramática nos ensina que usamos can I para falar de coisas que nós podemos fazer por ter habilidade física, motora, mental. Mas o can I, nesse caso, can I get you, ele é usado como um dispositivo de uma interrogação que na verdade não é bem uma pergunta, é uma oferta. Can I get you an aperitif? Can I get you a drink? Can I get you a beer? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Okay. okay. So repeat with me. Can I get you an aperitif? <coughs> Now, Are you ready to order now? Now no. é a mesma coisa aqui. At this moment, right now. 
Agorinha, né? Agora. O que, que é que você vai fazer agora? Order. E eu quero saber se você está ready to order. Se você já analisou todo o meu menu, já tomou consciência de tudo que tem lá, e se eu já posso coletar o seu order, o seu pedido. Se você já está ready. Are you ready? Já está pronto, né? Você já se sente apto a fazer isso aqui? A fazer o seu pedido? Ok? So repeat with me. Are you ready to order now? Não precisa ser rápido, tá, gente? Precisa ser com o ritmo certo. Are you ready to order now? Finalmente, essas duas últimas, nós falamos do steak. E nós descobrimos que o steak tem vários pontos de cozimento. Né? A gente viu lá, deixa eu voltar um pouquinho. Nesta imagem... Né? Os diferentes pontos de cozimento do steak. Correto? Então, se eu preciso saber qual é o ponto que o meu cliente quer, eu preciso fazer essa pergunta a ele do tipo How would you like your steak? Rare? Medium rare? Well done? How would you like your steak? Esse how would you like não se aplica só a steak. Por exemplo, how would you like your coffee with milk? Without milk? With sugar? Without sugar? How would you like your tea? Hot? Cold tea? Iced tea? How would you like? How would you like? É a maneira como você prefere algo. How would you like to travel? By bus? By car? Or by plane? How would you like to go? Ok? So repeat with me. How would you like your steak? Um pouquinho mais natural do que o que eu falei aqui. How would you like your steak? How would you like your steak? Ok? E a próxima? Vocês vão ver que novamente eu uso a expressão Would you like? Would you like? É muito usado para ofertas. Eu posso dizer Can I get you a cup of coffee? Como aqui? Can I get you an aperitif? E eu posso fazer uma Pergunta de mesmo efeito, usando. Would you like an aperitif? Compartilhe várias ofertas, ok? De várias coisas, usando. Can I get you? E depois usando would you like? Ambos na estrutura interrogativa. Por exemplo, can I get you a cup of tea? Tem o mesmo valor de... Would you like a cup of tea? Pratiquem. Can I get you a cup of coffee? A outra versão diz. Would you like a cup of coffee? Can I get you a bar of chocolate? Or. Would you like a bar of chocolate? Can I get you some cookies? Or. Would you like some cookies? Então, qual seria a outra forma de perguntar? Can I get you some wine? Ou simplesmente, Would you like to order some wine? Ô oh, professor, mas aí entrou to order aqui, né? Por que, que não entrou no can I get you? 
Okay, get share verb. Can I get you some wine? Would you like? Não tem um verbo nessa expressão. Então, would you like? Quem would like? Would like fazer alguma coisa. Gostaria de fazer alguma coisa, né? De fazer o quê? Would you like to order? Quem would like? Would like to do something? Or would like? Would like something? Would you like some wine? Would you like to order some wine? Would you like another class? Would you li like to attend another class? Would like transita tanto para coisas quanto para ações. Ok? Would you like to order some wine? Repeat with me. Would you like to order some wine? Ok? So, this is the language study section of lesson 9. Now we have a vocabulary here. Okay. Some of these words are familiar to you because they are in Portuguese. So, let's practice them. Bacon. That you know, it's kind of big meat. Basil. Repeat with me, basil. What? This is basil, teacher. This is basil. You use it in the margarita pizza. Manjericão. Basil. Okay. Bread. Repeat with me. Different types of bread. 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 The chef's salad. Well, dependendo do chef, é a receita do chef. De uma salad. Chef salad. I don't think it's necessary to translate croissant. Croissant. This is not even English. This is French. Egg. An egg. Egg. Some eggs. Egg. Followed by. Essa expressão followed by indica uma sequência. Vamos lembrar o áudio. A moça fala, I think I want avocado and brown tart. Followed by the salmon. Olhem para mim. Followed by the salmon. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you ask for some, I don't know, fish cakes. Followed by your lunch. Followed by pescada amarela. Ah, professor, como que eu vou traduzir arroz de cuchá para esses gringos? Não vai traduzir, querido. Eles não traduzem croissant para a gente. Né? Eles não traduzem bacon para a gente. Na verdade, a gente tem né? a palavra, mas não usa. Chama de bacon também. Então, são nomes próprios. Vamos tratá-los como nomes próprios. Ok? Grilled. Grilled é um processo Isso que envolve um grill. Que a gente já convencionou chamar no Brasil de grill. Né? Grilled chicken, grilled steak, grilled fish. É qualquer coisa que você cozinha usando um grill. Half. Cuidado com a pronúncia disso aqui. Tá? É. Half. E aí você diz, half a bottle. Half é exatamente esta fração. Aí você pode dizer, half a bottle. Meia garrafa, né? Half an apple. I have a complete apple. I cut the apple in two. So, half an apple on the one side. 
have an apple on the other side. Uh, half, okay? When you split into parts, okay, so it's a fraction. Half a bottle, half a glass, half a steak, okay? Ham. This is ham. Smoked ham. Yeah. Ham. Another piece of ham. Let me find a ham. Ham sandwich, okay? Another ham sandwich, também conhecido como bauru aqui por nós, né? So this is ham, okay? Ham. Meat. So here you have different types of meat. We have chicken, which is a kind of meat. You have the T-bone, which is a type of meat. You have different types of meat. Pig meat, pork meat, in fact. Cow meat, <coughs> chicken meat, meat. Mas geralmente a palavra meat também é usada sem nenhuma especificidade depois para se referir à carne bovina, ok? Meat. Medium rare é um dos pontos de cozimento, a gente já discutiu. I don't think it's necessary to translate. Menu. Mas Room. Let's remember the mushroom. Champignon is a type of mushroom. Ready. Como que eu vou explicar ready para vocês? Vou sair para algum lugar. Preciso tomar banho. Me vestir. Depois que eu fizer Todo ritual, aí sim, I'm ready. Antes de vocês assistirem a aula, vocês precisam ler o material, ouvir os áudios. Antes de resolver o exercício, primeiro vocês precisam. You need to be ready. Ok, so, with a pencil, a notebook, and so on. So, are you ready? Yes. So, I am about to start to do something. Eu tô para começar a fazer alguma coisa porque eu já estou. Ready. Salmon. It's just like in Portuguese. I showed salmon. It's a type of fish. Salmon. Sandwich. Soup. Soup. Let me show you some soup. Soup, more soup, another type of soup, another type of soup. We have a variety of soups, ok? Não confundir com a pronúncia de soap. Se vocês confundirem a pronúncia, certamente não vão confundir o gosto. Soup, sopa, soap, sabão. Qual o problema? É que como em português, esse O do, da nossa soup é mais próximo do O de soap, da palavra sabão em inglês, aí a gente tem uma tendência danada para pronunciar errado. Toma cuidado, tá? Parece, mas não é. Não, tá? Soup, soup. So, 
Post. Post. A toast. Toasts. Toast, beans, and egg. Estranho, né? Toast. Ok? Toast. Tomato. In American English, the pronunciation is tomato. Let's say tomato. Tomato. No áudio, eles falam inglês mais próximo do inglês da Inglaterra. Tomato. Tomato. Could be tomato, tomato. Ok, whatever. Tomato. Tomato. The plural is tomatoes. Tomatoes. And, finally... Watercress. Well, water, vocês devem imaginar, é alguma coisa que vem de água. Press. O que seria watercress? Vamos descobrir. Watercress. Is this plant here? Se vocês não são muito familiares com os vegetais, com as plantas, mas vocês já devem ter percebido que isso aqui é agrião. Watercress. 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 More watercress. The plural of watercress is watercress. Watercress não é contável, não tem plural, ok? Watercress. Agrião, watercress. Right? So, I think that's it for today. Okay? In the next class, in the next recorded class, I'll discuss with you exercises 4, 5, and 6. Okay? 3, 4, 5, and 6. E eu vou discutir uma coisa bem tranquila, que é a diferença do uso de A e N, como pronomes indivíduos, Definidos, artigos, perdão, artigos indefinidos, e the como artigo the, the finido. Ok? Então, a, n, nós vamos ver quando é o caso que eu uso a, qual é o caso que eu uso n, nós vamos ver que isso tem a ver com, muito mais com o som do que com a ortografia, e o the, que em oposição a a e n, trata da especificidade daquilo que você fala. I'm an English teacher. I'm the teacher for English 3 for the tourism course at UFMA. Acho que vocês já sacaram que um artigo indefinido, um, uma, uns, umas, né? O uns, umas é o sa... Deixa pra lá. Um, uma, né? E the, o, ou a, fulano, fulana, coisa. A coisa. O fulano. Ok? Isso fica como assunto para o próximo vídeo. Esse foi um vídeo teste. Eu espero que vocês tenham conseguido aproveitar. Na quinta-feira eu vou pegar o feedback de vocês para saber se foi tudo bem, se ficou compreensivo, se os áudios ficaram adequados. É claro que é vocês que vão ter que pausar, voltar, escutar de novo. Mas eu espero que tenha dado certo. Eu vou tentar gravar os próximos vídeos usando o notebook como dispositivo auxiliar para tocar o áudio, porque eu já percebi que se eu tocar na mesma máquina que eu estou usando aqui para fazer a gravação, tem eco, a menos que eu mute o meu microfone. Então eu vou usar o notebook conectado na entrada de som da máquina principal como recurso para dar play nos áudios. É... Essa é uma crítica que eu já posso perceber de agora e que já tenho a correção pronta, que a correção a, era a solução que eu usava com vocês pelo Google Meet. 
Eu espero que vocês gostem. O pessoal que é de fora da UFNO, que está eventualmente assistindo, espero que tenha gostado. Depois eu vou gravar um vídeo com a revisão das lições 7 e 8. E, em breve, antes de quinta-feira, já disponibilizarei a finalização da lição 9, ou seja, a lição 9B. Eu vou renomear agora essa aula como lição 9A, porque vai ter uma aula de conteúdo lição 9B, ok? Então, por hoje é só, tá? Lembrando, se você gostou, deixa o like aí, por favor, ajuda pra caramba, se inscreve no canal, principalmente quem não é aluno da turma, é, é uma forma de dar uma força, tá? Obrigado pela compreensão, a gente sabe que isso aqui está acontecendo por conta da minha cirurgia, né? mas a gente logo volta a presencial assim que eu tiver recuperado e vai ser tudo de bom. Tá bom, pessoal? Muito obrigado. Por enquanto é só. Até a próxima aula. Valeu!